Hello. Welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am going to be participating, however minimally, in uh, an event created by Rick McDonnell. And this is called NYRB April, where you are encouraged to read from the NYRB Classics line. And as you can see, I am sitting next to all my NYRB classic books. And these are just a great set of books, printing up lesser known classics that um, everyone should at least be thinking about reading. So I will be participating. Um, I'm not gonna get to that many uh, because I'm also a book to judge prize and I've got some pretty hefty books to read in uh, April and May. But I have finished reading one NYRB classics, and that is The Long Ships by Birkenstein. And this is a novel written in the 40s uh, in Swedish, and it is a historical novel about the Vikings. The time setting for this book is roughly 980 to 1010. And it is the story of a Viking um, he's either Swedish or Danish. Um, there is a note in the translator that the, the borders quite aren't the same as they are now. And though, even though he was living in Sweden, he's actually called himself Danish. I'm not going to get too involved in those quibbles over what they call nationalities, but it is the story of um, a Viking family. Uh, the family had three sons. Um, Two of the elder sons um, had some mishaps, and the lesser son was named Orm, and he was not considered a very good prospect for the family. But The Long Ships is Orm's story. And Orm's story is that he, he, he really was a little more successful than his parents thought he would be. Now, this is a historical novel, some of the language translated from English, if you read some reviews, some people think it's, it's rather stilted English, it, but that's done purposefully. I guess the original Swedish was done in an archaic style, and the translator decided to try to replicate that a bit. Now, when I read this book, I actually listened to the audiobook version, so um, it worked just fine as an audiobook. Um, the stilted English didn't really faze me at all just listening to the audiobook, but um, if you read it as an ebook or a paper book, um, maybe that would be something to concern yourself. Well, anyway, back to the story of Orm. Um, this is a story of his adventures over his lifetime. Like I said, it's at least a 30 year span. Um, it starts off when he was a young man and going a Viking and it ends when he is a very old, well, not a very old man, but an old man. And he has quite a lot of adventures. Now, this is not really a plot-driven book. It's more an episodic. So um, you will see an episode when he is young, and um, it has some consequences. Um, one of the earliest episodes is that one of his... Um, Viking raids goes a little bit wrong, and um, he ends up as a galley slave. Now, as a galley slave, um, he, he does get out of that situation. And the situation, sorry, my cat's running around, I'm playing with a ball. Um, so he has, uh, he gets out of that situation by an earlier event. And I don't want to give you too many spoilers, on the plot, but um, it, 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 it's, it's well done um, how he gets out of his galley slave situation. And then he becomes a mercenary for a, an Islamic, um, let's just say, um, lord. That's not, probably not the, the, the technical term. Um, but of course, um, he gets into trouble as a mercenary and has to, um, flee the Islamic empires and, and go back to the Scandinavian north. And by that time, he'd been gone for um, seven or eight years, I think it was. 
but he becomes successful in his own right, in his own country. And now, that's really all I want to say about the plot. As I said, it, it's very meandering, um, but I enjoyed it. Now, who is going to enjoy this, this, this kind of book? Um, it is an adventure story. So, um, the, the women characters are not all that great. There is a fairly strong woman that Orm meets and he wants to marry. And there's um, some rather humorous exchanges between him and her. And um, she, she protects some of his assets in a way that is fairly intriguing. Um, and she has a little bit of strength in a woman character, but really you're not going to be reading this for the strength of the, the women characters. And even the male characters are a little, um, I wouldn't say cliched, but um, rather tried and true. Maybe that's the same thing. Um, but it is a story of Vikings. If you like Viking stories, I think you will like this book. Um, these Vikings have a great many adventures. Um, it's not too bloody. Um, there's not a whole lot of sex. There's some interplay between uh, the old pagan religions and the rise of Christianity and how some of the Vikings were converted to Christianity. Um, some of those passages, when they're talking about the, the conversion to Christianity, got a little tedious, in my opinion, um, mostly because I don't consider myself a Christian, um, and it was just a little annoying. But it's also that these Vikings, why they do convert to Christianity, it's really wondering how, how far that, that depth of religious feeling goes. And there is one of the asides of a, a monk. And I think this is my, one of my favorite characters that comes later in the book. And the monk was um, told, prophesied, that he was going to have three great sins in his life. And each sin would be progressively worse than the other. And the first two sins, I'm not going to give away too much, involve women. He's not supposed to be involving himself with women as a good Christian, but even Christian monks cannot really resist the appeal of beautiful young maidens. So that's it. Um, who's going to like this? I said stories, people who like stories of Viking. I'm thinking of David Wiley. I'm thinking of Michael K. Vaughn. I'm thinking of Revenant Reads. Those are the kinds of people who will really enjoy this book. I am glad I read it. Um, I would say it's above average for, for most books. And it, it, it's a good adventure story. So now I have to read more NYRB books for April. Um, the ones I'm thinking of reading are right here. I want to read Storm by George R. Stewart. Now, he is most famous for his science fiction novel, Earth Abides, that was a post-apocalyptic story set after a worldwide plague, and it is one of my favorite science fiction novels. Now, Storm is an ecological novel, also written in the 50s, um, and the main character in this book is a massive storm, and how this storm interacts with other characters. So I've seen some mixed reviews of this. Some people say it's just fabulous, some um, that, that having the storm as a main character is highly inventive and highly entertaining, and some other people who think that a storm is boring. But I think it's going to be interesting because I don't mind a character as a storm. And the other one I want to read it's just a book of poetry. Um, this is um, Gold by Rumi. Um, it's newly translated from the Persian. Um, and that's what I will be reading for NYRB April. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.